And I would like to thank Dean Kashif and of course the organizing uh, committee to uh, thank for inviting me here. And I have told Dean Kashif that he did something very, very bad. He hosted me and all of you so well that probably I will not go back. So he has to feed me for the rest of my life. So thank you for this wonderful uh, welcome. This is my first time to Malaysia. I've been to 68 countries. This is the 68th country. And this is my first time, and I will love it. Definitely it's not going to be the last time, and I will be back to this wonderful, beautiful country many, many times in the future. Yesterday, the dinner was great, but it was so late that I started to see the people in my table, including uh, Professor Jafar Jafari, like a chicken leg, because I was so but later the dinner came amazing, Saturday or eight, I don't know how many courses. Unbelievable dinner, so that was so good. Thank you as well. Again, my name is Jihan Chobano. I'm the Mekiman and Dodge Chair at the University of South Florida, South Florida. I'm also the Director of M3 Center for Hospitality Technology and Innovation. I also currently serve as the President of Association of uh, North America Higher Education International. As you can see, besides the, being a professor at the University of South Florida, I do have quite a few different roles, just like any of you, uh, keeps me busy. Uh, I am the editor of three different journals, Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology, uh, Journal of Global Business Insights, and Journal of Global Education and Research. We also, on a organizes uh, three conferences around the world. We just had one in Vietnam about a month ago. And uh, I will also talk about uh, in, in that too. Also, the, I'm the chair of Hospitality and Tourism, 2030 Think Tank, which I will also tell you some of the findings from the first two, two think tanks that we had. Anahe, very quick uh, commercial, that it's the mission of Anahe, Association of North American Higher Education, uh, North Higher Education International, is to promote and encourage a global culture. Uh, Anahe has a variety of different programs. Business scholars program, partnership programs, journals, conferences, awards, distinguished lecture series also. Uh, this is one of the uh, journals of Anahe. You can uh, go to this uh, journal. It's Journal of Global Business Insights. I'm the editor of Journal of Hospital Tourism and Technology. As you can see here, this year in 2016, our site score was 1.70. In 2018, live as of December is 2.06. It's an ESCI and Scopus Journal. I invite all of you to submit articles there. It's ranked 19 among all hospitality technology journals uh, inside the Google Scholar, or seventh among all hospitality journals. It's only eight years old. As a young journal, this is a great uh, accomplishment. And uh, in, in, it is among the old Scopus, it's ranked uh, number 39 among all tourism leisure hospitality um, journals. If you were to just count the hospitality journals, it's ranked the 10th. Um, I have several books, uh, just some of them are here. Uh, hospitality Information Technology, Electronic Procurement, Food Service Cost, Restaurant Management, and majority of my contributions to these books are in the uh, field of uh, technology. And we just published this book at Applied Caution Whispers in Prison Hospital Research recently. We also have advances in global business economics, and I have about uh, eight proceedings books as well. Again, back to where I was, that's why, that's why I was a little confused before. Uh, we have this uh, journal, Journal of Global Business Insights, Journal of uh, Global Education and Research. Also, these are all open access journals, true open access. Doesn't cost anything to submit, publish, or read these articles, 100% based on volunteerism. So I thank all of the editorial board, reviewers, and of course, the authors. This journal is going to be launched next week. As a matter of fact, as soon as I go back from here, I will send an email to announce the creation of Journal of Global Hospitality and Tourism, again, 100% open source journal. Also, uh, in 2019, we are starting another journal, again, Anahe, the organization, Journal of Global Data Science and Analytics. For any of these journals, if you're interested in serving as a reviewer or editorial board member, please let me know. Or if you would like to do a special issue, please do let me know. And Anahe does conferences. This is our next conference. I would like to invite you to beautiful Istanbul. 
uh, just like in Cushing, uh, Malaysia. It's a beautiful town. If you have not seen it, if you have seen it, you probably know. Know what? The September 3rd, you know, October 3rd in Bachishir University. Amazing university right on the Bosphorus. But that's where we're going to have the conference, globeconference.org. Also, we're going to have um, in May in Sarasota, my campus, Global Conference of Education and Research. This is where we had the Vietnam conference about a month ago, Hoa San University. This is where we had the think tank, which I'm going to tell you in a few seconds. Also, Alihe has a lot of webinars. They are all free of charge, open access. So like Yale professor Ravi Dar uh, has done an amazing webinar. You can go and watch it. Uh, Levant Altena has done another webinar. Uh, Jason Shao, the editor of Academy of Management Journal, has done. Um, many, many more. I will just like bypass like this from Tsinghua University to uh, Dr. Il Professor Ilan Alon uh, to also we have variety of methodology based uh, webinars, just like uh, you are seeing International Network Science and Complex Systems, General Data Regulation. Again, for the time being, please go to anahe.org and you can have access to all of them. Uh, for free of charge. Feel free to share, send to your students, scale development, sexual harassment, robot is actually uh, Professor Stan, who just delivered yesterday. He also was featured in one of our webinars. Uh, also, uh, Hussein Olya, Mustafa, uh, Razumanash, uh, Mark Pilas, uh, online panel, you name it. This is all many, many. Okay, now to my uh, keynote. We did a think tank. This is Hospitality and Tourism 2030 think tank. This was co-organized by um, M3 Center at University of South Florida and also Anna Hay. The first one we did it in October 1st, 2018. I don't know if anybody is here who had attended the, oh, wonderful, that's great. Uh, we had some of them, this is our group picture, you can see we had some subgroups, people went into that. We asked people to think, dream, what's gonna happen in the future? All the trends, technology or not technology, that's going to impact our hospitality and tourism industry. You can see, right, this is different groups people are discussing, wonderful and great. Uh, there, there were three different groups at that time in Vietnam. And then this is New York City. We just had this in, I think, November 13, uh, in New York City. We had, uh, again, industry and also academic people. Oh, the, the, the one the uh, Here's the group over there. Again, they uh, we were divided into different groups so that you understand where this information are coming from. Everybody took notes, and at the end they presented their findings. So now I'm going to tell you some of the things that they have talked, and we have been talking for some time. World population, as of today, as you probably can know, is 7.6 billion people, right? As you and I need the sound also too. I should have sound in here. Sound? Okay. Maybe a little bit less, 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 yeah. A little bit up, not that less. We need to be able to hear a little bit. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. 7.6, and you see the number is going up, but every second we have four or five babies are born. So by 2050, we are going to have 9.3 billion people. So obviously this is not a trend, but we already know that that's a fact. And if you look at this busy screen here, uh, what I would like you to look at this top, top column there, to roll. Uh, in 1990, 435 million international visitors we had in the world, which means that they visit from one country to another. If you look at the distribution of that 435 million people who visited another country, two thirds came from advanced economies, one third came from emerging economies. If you go to 2015, the first year that we surpassed 1 billion people, international tourists, the proportion is almost 50-50. What is that telling us? That means that emerging economies now, they are, we are having more middle class and they are traveling more. So that, therefore, this distribution of international travelers are becoming more even. So, of course, no need to tell that China has already been the top spender in terms of tourism and this trend is going to continue more and more. But this creates a problem. We are having more population, we are having more middle class, we are having more people who can travel, afford to travel. That creates a huge over-tourism. I'm sure that you are hearing city after city, they don't welcome the tourists. You know, our uh, opening, the uh, chief executive officer of QS, 
just mentioned earlier that, that um, it is becoming like terrorism, tourism is terrorism, uh, something, something like that. So this problem, for example, as you all uh, may know, Venice, uh, the locals are sick of you. You may have heard that the boat owners, local boats, are blockade. They uh, didn't allow the cruise ships to come to Venice uh, several times in protest, right? And this is Barcelona. Uh, this is in tourism. This is an invasion. They don't want tourists anymore. Of course, the Great Wall in China, if you know in Beijing, sometimes it becomes so crowded that so the middle class is on the rise. There is no one authority that controls this. And this, <clears throat> and if they're for the cost of controlling this, who pays for it, are the uh, questions. So the, the think tank participants came up with this idea of the smart city, making cities more livable. So one of the things to solve all of these smart tourism problems, we also see some of the applications in as part of smart city. For example, Internet of Things is one of the solutions that you have seen. You may have seen, heard of this many, many times. The Internet of Things is, is any device that is connected to the Internet. Just a short video here. For example, the first ATMs were the Internet, the first of Internet of Things. Everything is connected to the Internet today, right? If you look at even in your homes, the vehicles, etc. I would like to just go ahead. For example, um, if you are scared of your wife that tells you to buy milk and you forgot to buy the milk, uh, no worry anymore. Because, for example, LG and Samsung both, for example, created a refrigerator that is connected to the internet with the RFID tag. It scans what's inside and sends you a text message what you need to buy. So to a level that now it's going to be integrated to your grocery store, then you don't have to worry when the milk is down, it's going to be ordered automatically. It will be in your footsteps. Uh, you may have heard Microsoft Home of the Future that here, uh, this particular kitchen, what it does is that, again, it scans everything in your kitchen that is, has attached to RFID. And based on what you have at home, it uh, suggests you recipes. So that you don't have to worry about. If you have some pasta, if you have some chicken, it says fettuccine alfredo chicken with chicken. So you will be, and not only it shows you what you can do, but it shows you how you can cook that particular item. Smart city applications, the street lights, they don't just give the light to the street, but they also scan the traffic info, parking availability, surveillance, surveillance for security, and weather quality. And then it just uh, does this uh, streams that to live sources of information. Chicago Pirates already implemented these street lights, and uh, there is more and more. Eva, for example, is looking for a parking spot. Uh, instead of just spending all this time, the technology will allow her to uh, know where to park and then go there. In the case of uh, accessible tourism or accessibility, that this person, again, the wheelchair that he or she is driving has internet connectivity and communicates with the traffic light, uh, gives that person extra time to pass that street. Um, this weather sensors, I'm sure that you have heard of them, especially in golf, golf courses around the world in Florida, also are used. It senses the humidity in the air and then it controls the water in the system. If it is going to rain, it cuts the water, saves about 40% of energy. This is what you see here. A lot of the uh, golf courses around the world are implementing this, again, uh, from the sustainable standpoint of view. Another sustainability technology that we are seeing as a trend more and more is what we call smart air conditioning. Instead of this regular air, air conditioning, what you are seeing is that now chiller plants. Chiller plants are God's gift to us. When you dig the earth about 10 meters, you put a water tank there, that water stays cold by nature. And then you just take that water, put, put through the pipes, and put the hot air, you get a free air conditioning, which also saves about 40% energy. Majority of the buildings are now switching to this one. This is how it looks. The tanks are dig, uh, buried in the earth down. And more and more, water or electricity meters do not need to be checked by person saves a lot of resources. They are also part of Internet of Things, connected to the Internet, uh, communicates this to the utility companies. 
This quality is a robotic eel for water quality. Uh, <clears throat> what you see here is, that is, is an eel, robotic eel, that goes into the water, it's even drinking water or beaches or lakes, and takes the sample of the water, analyzes inside that robot eel, and sends the information to the public or the authorities as they do it. You can see it's amazing how this technology works, and you get a, a live, um, and it does it all the time, it doesn't stop. You get a live, um, you know, feedback on the quality of the water in that particular place. So traffic lights can adjust to adjust the flow of the traffic and gain sustainability. Price, uh, crime prevention, police cars, uh, you may have seen this in there. They have these cameras on the top. It scans all the vehicles, plate numbers automatically, and then sends them to the central police database and checks if there's any people or not. 17,000 people were kept from the streets and came from the security perspective. Smart payment systems, I'm sure that you heard, all around the world, especially in China now, there's a cashless society. It is so cashless that one day I was walking on the street, a beggar come to me, he asked me money, and being a poor academician, I had no money in my pocket. He said, don't worry, uh, you can just pay me with uh, WeChat. So he showed me the code, he, uh, her code, and then you can scan this photos of you may use WeChat or Alipay, that you can just give the beggars. Even the beggars now are using cashless society. Unbelievable. Very, very interesting. Even toilets now, Toto, are connected to the internet in such a way that when you go do your business in the morning, it analyzes what you have done. And it sends you an email with the results. Yes, seriously, isn't that amazing? I mean, you go in the morning and from the way that you walk, it understands who you are. Just like we have the fingerprints iris, also the way that we walk are unique to every human being. These toilets understand from the walk if that's the child, if that's the father, if that's the mother. And then again, if your results are not good three days in a row, it calls your doctor automatically, makes an appointment for you. Unbelievable. Think about, you know, connected to the internet, internal things. Of course, we see other trends, right? Again, think tank came up with these. Foldable phone beats Samsung. This is a Chinese brand now. In the near future, we are going to have the papers that we hold are all going to be electronic, so they are going to be updated uh, on, on, on a plan. For example, custom clothes from your phone. Speaking of trends, this is where we are going now. As you can see, some people aren't. But we all deserve clothes that fit us. MTLR uses machine learning to take your measurements right on your phone for custom clothes. With MTLR, you will never make them all again. So this is again another example of where we are going with technology. This IPv6, uh, version 6, which is the internet of things, are, look at the numbers, are, are amazingly increasing. The more we are going to have a lot of different uh, technologies uh, by 2020, more than 50 billion. Transportation is not staying still. You see this Dreamliner, probably, I don't know if you know what's special about Dreamliner, the first plane out of, made out of plastic. So that's much lighter than the other ones. This cost $120 million, as opposed to the cost of uh, competitor was $380 million. What does that mean? Sustainable purposes, less energy, it's, uh, it consumes, and also it is cheaper. Norwegian Airlines, I fly from Tampa to London for about $300 round trip most of the time. So this is one, and of course air taxis um, that are coming, becoming reality in the next 2030, right? We're talking about 2030. These are going to be new, and, and Dubai is starting to actually test them, and flying cars, as you can see, this is Terra Vukia, the company. Uh, I think I have a video here, let's see if this were to come. Okay, here you go. If you can start the video for me. You can see how this is a car, and of course this is a, a prototype, but it works uh, very successfully, and providing police action for Of course, this sets a lot of different challenges uh, for us in the future, but this is becoming reality thanks to the drone technology that makes this available to 480 uh, kilometer per hour, which is not uh, to the speed of plane, but it's half. Uh, 
uh, of the speed. So if you were to uh, go, uh, and then of course Hyperloop is going to change the way that you travel. This is Elon Musk's invention. It's a tube. There's this capsule inside, which is a train, and then um, it sucks it. And then uh, not right now. They are doing testing in California, in China, and the first tests are very successful. Look at that. 1,000 kilometer per hour, 700 miles. What does that mean? That's the mean. That's the speed of a plane. Imagine you are going to fly speeding on Earth, right? That's going to change the, the way that we do tourism and travel. I told you Dubai police are flying motorbikes. You can see some of the pictures. Tourism, uh, Annals of Tourism, actually this article was just published recently. Uh, autonomous vehicles could shape the future of urban tourism. But the think tank participants said, it, wait a minute, this is all good, but there is ethical, a lot of ethical questions. Such as if an autonomous car is about to make an accident, who should it kill first? What would you say? If I were to ask you, would it uh, kill a stroller, a girl, boy, pregnant mother, male doctor, female doctor? What you see here is a study result from MIT. People say that autonomous cars should kill the cat first, criminal number two, dog is number three, old woman, old man, look at that. Homeless, if somebody's homeless, kill him. Save the doctor. You see the ethical problems, right? There is amazing research to be done in this particular field. So this is whole framework is smart tourism within the smart city. And there is other trends as well. I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, Stan has covered this yesterday in his presentation. Robots, uh, one, uh, Honda Hotel in, in Japan, 100% hotel that's run by the robots. You can actually even choose which robot that you would like to check in by. And Google launching most booking for hotels. That's coming up. So we are going seeing a lot of trends in voice activation, voice enabled technology. So Maria, for example, uh, testing right now uh, voice control rooms that you will be able to talk to your uh, room and tell uh, the room what to do and what to show on the, on the lights as well. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going a little bit fast. A lot also, a lot of hotels uh, just that they are testing voice activated rooms, so they are coming. And look at this glass. This company is called New Energy Technologies. It's unbelievable because what you see is a clear glass, but it's a solar panel. So it generates the electricity for the room, for your hotel room that you are doing over there. So, uh, of course, now Maslow's hierarchy has been updated, right? Instead of physical needs that you need to fill your persona, now the first one is Wi Fi. Right? They put it in, and they even put like power. First, right? So that's why we see power everywhere. But by 2030, do not worry because you will not need cables. Why? Because all of them are going to be wireless. So in this hotel, in the future, that we are going to have panels behind these walls, and we will be able to charge all of our devices without any cables. Uh, Self-driving hotel room. This is a new type of technology that they are self-driving car, but it's like in the shape of a hotel room. So while you're traveling from one place to another, you can actually see the world and do all these activities there. Robots, uh, Stan covered that a lot, so I'm not gonna do it. Robot chef, robot bartender, there's many, many different. This is a robot waiter, Ginger, in pilot technology in Nepal, uh, have done. And look at this, this is a self-cooking kitchen, right? And uh, Heidelberg, uh, restaurant chains in China have implemented this, that there's no human at all, right? Everything that can be automated will be automated. As you can see, these parts are doing walk by itself and they are very, very successful. The tests show that the tech, uh, case quality are equal if not better than the ones that are human. This is Heidela, as you can see, uh, replaces their staff with robots. In the future, we're gonna go and do see all of these things. This is the hot pot restaurant, Hydra. Just to see, if you have been to this restaurant, it's a hot pot restaurant, so all of the items that you order comes to your table, they are done by robots now, not a human being. Look, the minute that you order, within seconds that you get that item in your, otherwise in your traditional one. And of course, think about robots, right? A robot costs about $7,000 to make. A person, a staff person, is actually, you have to pay, depending on the country, minimum wage, but the person has a wife or a husband or a girlfriend, there is drama, they get sick, robots don't do that. So anything that can be automated will be automated. There is no view there. And look at this, preview before ordering, experience. 
are going to come to this level. You're going to get this device in your dining table. You will actually see three-dimensional view of what you are going to eat. So take it to the menu to the next level. Of course, this will also allow you to be able to do suggestive selling. The, the restaurants can push the items with the highest profit margin. Uh, going fast, this is Pizza Hut. Just reveal this track. As you order the pizza, it actually does the pizza inside the truck. This is electric truck, zero emission. So by the time it reaches, the pizza is out of the oven within seconds. IPTV, all of the hotels now, most of the hotels use this. Based on your country, the guests, their TV channels, the first five channels, are from their country. If I go to a hotel, the first five channels are going to be from Turkey. Uh, Marriott test this uh, virtual reality sets. And look at this virtual uh, Wi-Fi LED hologram. It's going to change the experience that events and marketing is going to do. Let's uh, do this for a few seconds, and then I, I'm uh, aware of the time. I'm going to finish very quickly. Look at what she's uh, showing. It's going to actually show people the three-dimensional view of the product. So you will be able to do this in the future with all of the marketing activities. This is a shoe, what you see, and then she's going to change it. Of course, this technology allows you to really take it to the next level. The, the dreaming bed, I don't know if you've seen this. This is a prototype. Before you go to bed, you go inside this bed, and you tell the bed what kind of dream you want to see. And you see that dream. So if you want to be a jackpot uh, powerball, you tell that in the morning, you wake up very happy. So you can just see, or you can just say that uh, me and my wife get along. You know, you put that in there, in the dream, you're going to get along, never fight, all that stuff. Your, uh, Gourmet Genomics, this is the three dimensional footprinting. This is another trend that was identified by the think tank participants. And uh, Dunkin Donut, this is interdisciplinary marketing. I don't know if you've seen, this is in Seoul. Dunkin Donut actually puts a machine in the buses, public buses. When the bus comes to a station, bus stop, that has a Dunkin' Donut, it actually uh, uh, shows an ad of Dunkin' Donut. Along with this ad, uh, when there is a jiggle of Dunkin' Donut, there is a coffee machine, and it generates the uh, taste of the coffee. You will see in the video in a second. So then, as the Dunkin' Donut ad is playing, the smell of the coffee, fresh coffee, comes into the bus. People see it. Uh, amazingly, and the results are uh, astonishing. They have seen uh, more than 40% increase in their sales. When people stop in that bus stop and then they go out, they immediately go by. Look, people are sleeping. Dunkin' Donut ad is playing on the background, and then the the machine is going to release the aroma of the coffee and with the radio advertisement. So the jingle in the uh, in the ad triggers the, the, the machine. This is the aroma machine, as you can see. Coffee. I mean, who doesn't like the fresh coffee smell, right? This, this comes, jingle is programmed with it, and then puts into the bus, and then as that comes, and people love it. So again, for the sake of time, I also, all of these slides are available on our website, and I, you will be able to. Smart wine, look at this wine bottle. Uh, augmented reality is going to take you to the next level. Now, the wine that you are going to buy, you can even see the grapes where it comes from, from the winery. winery. So, augmented reality, when you hold your smartphone into it, that your wine button actually talks to you. You can see some of the uh, feedback about that wine, uh, reviews, or where it comes from. If it is from Italy, you can go to Casa Rosa. Uh, to see how that wine has done. Again, for the time of, I'm almost done. Look at Stan talked about education trends yesterday. Look at all these new uh, uh, titles of jobs that we did not have 10 years ago. And get, God knows what we are going to have in 10 years. If you look at the, the different careers in hospitality industry, age careers, vice president of consumer insights, guest experience manager, director of revenue manager, 10 years ago, we did not have any of these uh, titles. Quality assurance, business evaluation manager, corporate social responsibility, you name it, e-commerce manager. And I have, this is one of my students from Oklahoma State. I uh, come across with him in one of the shows. And uh, he told me that he became the director of guest experience. And more and more big jobs are coming, right? Elder care services coordinator, especially people of China. Search engine optimization manager, user experience manager, 
talent management manager, chief listening officer. We didn't have this, but now we have this. With this code, I'm going to finish. If you can dream it, you can do it. The future is here. Just like Stan yesterday, we should not be scared of it. We should embrace it. We should think about it, how we are going to react to it. Thank you so much.